Hi, it's Richard here from the opahub.com website with the first in our Getting Started series, Getting Started with Oracle Policy Modeling in less than 10 minutes. Oracle Policy Modeling has five tabs. Yes, I said five tabs. The first one you need to know about is where you can create a new work area known as a project. Let's create a first project. The project has a name, including spaces and other characters, and it can be stored in any local folder on your disk. Change it here. You can define the rule language, which is the language you will use to write your natural language rules in Word and Excel, and the region. The region will control how region-sensitive items like dates and numbers and times will be displayed. When you've created your project, you will find you'll get switched automatically to the Rules tab, the second tab, the place where you will use Word and Excel documents to write your rules. You will also create folders to organize your rules into different structures. You can both delete documents, rename documents, right here from the Rules tab. Switching back to Project for a minute, you can find a good summary of your project right here telling you how many documents you have, about your data model, and other elements. You can open the project on your disk, or you can share a copy in the form of a zip file, which can be very useful if you also need to take a quick backup. Let's switch back to the Rules tab and open the Word document. Our Word document is where you write your rule. This is not a rule. This is some text that I've written in the form of three conditions regarding an order being shipped on time, being complete, and having a good shipping address. It becomes a rule normally when I give it a reason, when I give it a goal. What am I trying to test? What am I trying to find out? I'm trying to find out if the customer is satisfied. This will become a rule when I apply one of the predefined formats using the toolbar. So in my case, I will use Condition 1 to define these three conditions, and then I will use the conclusion format to define this as the goal of my rule. Then I will click the Validate button in the top right-hand side of the OPM toolbar and wait for this message. No errors have been found. Let's see what that's done to our Oracle Policy Modeling interface. Switching back to OPM, we can see that in the Data tab, the parsing engine has extruded the four items I wrote in my Word document and transformed them into attributes. Three inputs and one objective, one goal, which is exactly what I wrote in my Word document. Find out if the customer is satisfied. That's my goal. I can go back to my Word document and I can produce further attributes by adding new text. Here I'm going to add the number of broken items equals zero. And when I revalidate my document, back in the Data tab, we'll be able to see the updated data model, hence the name of the tab, the Data tab. There I can see I now have a number which has automatically been detected. When I double-click this input attribute, I will be able to confirm or change the attribute type. So I'm going to confirm that it's a number. Working in the Data tab allows you to both create, modify, and review any data model that may have been created either in a Word document or elsewhere, as we'll see in a minute. Writing in Word is not all about just chaining things together into something that isn't very friendly. We can use predefined structures, such as grouping operators, to create documents that are both easy to read and easy to visualize in terms of structure. Here I'm using both level 1 and level 2 to create this nice little structure. This will not change my data tab. It will simply make my rule a lot easier to read and a lot easier to understand. While I'm in the data tab, it remains for me to say that you can also enter attributes directly in the data tab. This is a very advantageous idea. The ability to construct the data model or import the data model from somewhere else, for example, before you actually start writing your rules. So I'm going to enter a new attribute. Notice how the parser has automatically selected the type of Boolean because I included a verb in my attribute. I, when I add it to my data tab, I am, of course, as you probably guessed, free to now go back to my Word document and make good use of this new attribute. not forgetting to validate, as you do after every change of your document, whether it be Word or Excel. 
So now we have quite an interesting little data model which is being updated automatically in the data tab when I make any changes. But what can I do with this policy modeling project? The answer is hidden away in part in the interview tab. One of the commonest reasons for using Oracle policy modeling is to make an HTML interview. I've added a new screen, think of it like a new page, to my interview. And I've created a nice heading here, which you'll see is actually the name of my new screen. And now I will focus on getting data from the user, getting input. Notice how the input button here shows me the five input attributes that were previously defined. Double clicking each of them adds them to my page. By default, the Booleans have appeared as radio buttons, which I don't like, so I can pick from one of the different kinds of control. So I'm going to choose checkbox. You guessed it. This is all about configuring. This is not all about writing HTML code or writing JavaScript. This is about leveraging what is available out of the box. And just so you know that you can do it, I've added a new set of structure to my interview to make it a little more interesting, including a container to organize my Booleans and a drop-down list for my broken items. Notice how when I add a drop-down list to my broken items, I get a warning until I add the values to my list, which seems entirely logical to me. While I'm here, I'm going to make sure that the broken items entering data is not required. I'm going to say that it's optional always, because maybe there aren't any broken items. I said there were five tabs, and the fifth one is the debug button. Yes, I know it's not a tab, but it allows me to test drive my interview. So let's test drive my interview by clicking the reset button and testing all of my work. You may be surprised, but this is a fully responsive interview. So if you don't see the same layout as I had in my interview tab, it's because I've had to shrink this to fit in your screen. I can see the reasoning behind any answer that is given. I can retest by choosing new values, clicking next, seeing the answer, showing the details, returning, trying again, checking the response, and being pleased that I have the answer that I expected. So, so far, so good. You've had in less than eight minutes a whistle-stop tour of Oracle policy modeling. In other videos in this series, we'll talk about the other elements, but for now, all you've got to remember is there are five tabs. Of course, this is just the start. If you're interested in more, come to our website or buy our book.